Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be making some color darkroom prints from Lomochrome Purple. This will be my first time trying to print out of these experimental films and I'm very curious what it's gonna look like. First I'm gonna attempt to make a contact sheet. I haven't done much of those. For some reason I get intimidated by them. I don't know why. I find they are um, a little bit finicky, especially the color ones. With black and white it's much easier because you can see everything that you do under that red light and when it comes to color printing it's not as easy because everything happens in the dark. The only time I tried to make a contact sheet in color. Um, my negatives were kind of crooked and all over the place. So yeah, I'm gonna try to come up with a solution how to make everything straight. I think contact sheets look very cool, especially when you're shooting under just one light scenario and the exposure on all of your photos is kind of the same. Most of the time uh, this is not my case. Whenever I shoot I come up with different ways of using light. So even on the same roll of film I get different exposures on different negatives. That's why I find it challenging to make these contact sheets look good. This roll of film that I'm about to print has more or less the same exposure. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's gonna come out. So yeah, let's make some prints. For contact sheet printing, there are these special frames with glass. I have one, it looks like this, but I find it tricky to use and it is actually too small to fit the negative sleeves under this glass. Once you're starting to close this glass, the paper and negative sleeves starts to slide off and the result looks very messy, so I came up with something else. I have a piece of glass that I took out of the frame. It's a bigger one, so for this I am going to use this bigger easel and for the sake of alignment I'm gonna tape the bottom of my negative sleeves to the easel so it will be easier to load the paper in the dark. I'm using Intrepid Enlarger and since these are 6x6 I'm gonna use 80mm lens. For the paper I am using Fuji Crystal Archive in Luster. It's not my favorite but I still have a leftover of it so I'm just gonna use that. My favorite all-time easel is this one. I have found it at an estate sale. I just like checking estate sales. This is great easel for uh, printing 8x10 photos. It's pretty heavy, it doesn't slide and it's very easy to load it in the dark because it has this little metal thingies that you can find by touch and then slide the paper there and it's gonna be straight. So that helps a lot. It makes perfect borders. I don't know what's up with this, but I have strong opinion about having perfectly straight borders on my prints. If I end up with a print with crooked borders, I'm gonna burn it. Just kidding. But for real though, nice even borders are just I am still using Bellini Array 4 kit. This is so far the cheapest one to get and it seems like it's almost always in stock. Well, at least in my experience. I get it from Freestyle Photo. Uh, they are based in California and I'm in Seattle area, so the shipping is relatively quick. For printing I use Seba Chrome Drum. I have two of them. One is meant for 11 by 14 and another one is for 8 by 10 paper. I do prefer Seba Chrome over Jobo. I have tried Jobo. In my experience Seba uh, Chrome is a little bit more tricky to use versus Jobo. 
but at the same time Sibachrome takes less chemistry for one print which is nice because I use my developer as one shot meaning I pour the chemistry in and then I just dump it uh, once I made one print. It's uh, not the most cost-effective and extremely generous way of using developer but I have found that it just works for me uh, for my um, temperature for my room conditions I don't know but I get uh, the most consistent results if I use a developer as one shot. When I pour chemistry into a chrome tank, I hold this tank slightly angled and try to pour the chemistry as quickly as possible. Then I roll the tank and when I need to dump the chemistry, I just do this like circular motions to let the uh, liquid to drain. It's been working for me. First time when I tried to use Sibachrome, I had some... Uh, interesting experience with it but then I figured how to use it so once you uh, figure it all out it's very easy and it doesn't take much time and last time I checked Sibachrome tanks were significantly cheaper than Jobo tanks so for me personally the choice was very obvious so when it comes to color darkroom printing with traditional color film the way I prefer to adjust colors is if this is a portrait, I know how the skin tone is supposed to look like. So I will adjust my enlarger uh, settings accordingly. But with experimental film stocks like Lomochrome Purple, the skin tone will not gonna look natural. It just not what this film about. The biggest feature that we know about Lomochrome Purple is this film transforms almost all of the colors into shades of purple, but the reds remain red. Luckily for me, on this shoot we had this red plaid coat, so I'm going to use this coat as my target color. I know that this coat is supposed to look red, so I'm gonna try to make it look red and see how other colors in the scene will shift. Whenever I adjust cyan, magenta or yellow, traditionally only magenta and uh, yellow, depending on the adjustments of the filtration of those colors, you have to adjust the exposure time accordingly. The traditional darkroom rule doesn't really apply with Intrepid. Most often than not, if you start following that percentage, in my experience, it is not enough. You still need to add a lot more than that percentage you initially added. I must admit I eyeball my exposure time. It takes a little bit of time to figure out how this enlarger works and I really wish to give you a specific formula how you can calculate the exposure time depending on filtration. I promise if I will ever figure out this formula, if there is even one, I will share it but so far it takes trial and error. All right, let's go through some prints because I made a few for my very first contact sheet. I have set cyan, magenta and yellow to all 100s the way Intrepid recommends. I ended up with this one. There is obvious magenta cast present on this print and given the fact that Lomochrome Purple will produce a lot of purples on the photos, I can still see this magenta cast. So for my next one, I decided to increase filtration on magenta and set it to 110. And 
and uh, this is uh, my next print. Here I already see a big change, especially in the areas where the water on the photos, it introduced different colors, but it gave the print a slightly warmer tone and I don't think I like it. On my next print, I decided to increase filtration on the yellow and set it to 104 and left magenta as is. I came up with this result. This image looks uh, slightly cooler and I kind of like it. Let's say the purple starts looking purple. For my next print, I decided to experiment with cyan. Normally, if you are printing a traditional color film, it's not recommended to use uh, cyan because technically it controls two colors at the same time. But when we are printing from experimental film stocks, where are significant color shifts, adjusting cyan is actually makes sense. So I decided to decrease filtration on cyan and set it to 96. And this is my result. In short, I like where we're going with this. On my next print, I also decided to increase filtration on yellow by two points, so I set it to 106. And I decreased the filtration of cyan to its minimum number, which is 88. And this is what I'm getting here. I like how the purples look, so I'm gonna stick with that and try to add filtration to magenta even more and see if I can get a little bit more split toning, the difference between water and other colors in the scene. On the next print, I have increased uh, filtration on my, of magenta to 116. What if I increase filtration of magenta by another two points? Let's see what it's gonna do. And this is what I got here. I'm gonna stick to these settings. I like the way everything looks. Red looks red. I'm gonna try to print uh, this photo in full size and see what it's gonna look like. So the negative to begin with was pretty overexposed. It was very dark and dense. I assume the exposure time on my enlarger will be significant. Let's see. <laughs> so first I made my first test strip. I have set aperture on the enlarger at f5.6 and I did four seconds increments on the test strip and this is what I got. This is very faint. I'm not even considering this. This is not gonna work. So moving on to test strip number two and test strip number two looks like this. My exposure increments were 10 seconds. I know it's a lot. I made the full print at 50 seconds with all the same settings and it looks like this. I think it can go slightly darker, but on this next print I decided to increase filtration of yellow by another two points. I want to see where we can go with this. And this is the print that I've got. If uh, we compare these two, this is definitely looks more purple. I think both of them work, so it's just a matter of preference. And for my third print, I decided to increase filtration on magenta by two more points, just to see if I can make it any better or I don't know. This is my print. If we compare three of them, I think all three look decent. I think I still would prefer print number one. Next, I went ahead and printed this photo. This one also printed on glossy paper because I ran out of my luster paper. Anyways, so I made the first strip and I did a four seconds increments of exposure time. I went with the darkest strip right here, which was 24 seconds. So I made the full print at 24 seconds. The aperture is still f5.6 and the settings are exactly the same. The light on this one was very high contrast. This one was shot in direct sunlight. I don't think I I can make this print look any better, so it is what it is. I'll just call it a day with this one. Next, I have printed this photo. With this one, I decided not to do test strip, and it was on the same exposure 
side of things as the previous one. So I went ahead and made the full print at 24 seconds of exposure time with the same exact settings, cyan 88, magenta 116 and yellow 106. And I got this. On this one, I like the colors and exposure is okay, but this side of the photo is a little bit too bright. Next, I just decided to do some burning in that particular area and I came up with this one and I like it. I think it looks good. My initial exposure on this was 24 seconds and then I covered part of the photo with a piece of cardboard and run enlarger again. Honestly, I was kind of eyeballing it. I think it took me extra 10 seconds. Another print that I decided to make was this one. For this one, I did make a test strip. I did five seconds increments. My darkest exposure here is 30 seconds. I personally think it's not enough. So I made the full print at 40 seconds and this is what I got. I think it looks good, so I'll just stick to it. The last print I did from this roll of film was this one. This one was the most overexposed negative out of the roll. I didn't do a test strip. I have made a full print at uh, 60 seconds of exposure time. I have noticed there is a slight shift of colors. The purple is not really purple. The whole print is on the warmer side. For my next one, I increased filtration of yellow by another two points. Uh, by the way, after latest firmware update on Intrepid, two points is minimum that you can increase or decrease filtration of yellow. My settings was cyan 88, magenta 116 and yellow 108. I have also increased the exposure time by 20 seconds. This one is 80 seconds of exposure total and it's a very, very long exposure time. <laughs> For my next print, I increased filtration on magenta by another one point and set it to 117. Also, I have increased my exposure time by another 10 seconds, which makes it 90 seconds of exposure time total. Um, yeah. I think it looks decent, but I want to try to increase exposure time even more and see if I can make this one any better. So on the last print, I increased exposure time by another 10 seconds, which made it 100 seconds total, which is one minute and 40 seconds. And this is crazy, but I ended up with this. I think it looks good. It's just slightly darker than the previous one, but I think both of them are pretty good. So I will take it as a final result. These were my experiments with printing from Lomochrome Purple Film. If you like this video about darkroom printing, I have at least two more of them on my channel. Check those out, I'm gonna touch them. Thanks for watching this video and see you in another one.